In the second part of the lecture, we will introduce stochastic gradient descent. Stochastic gradient descent is a method that builds upon gradient descent. Its aim is to minimize a loss function c of x and theta with respect to theta, so changing parameters theta to find the arc min of c. And we introduce this method in order to overcome two problems of straightforward gradient descent, namely the problem that we tend to get stuck in local minima and the problem that we do a lot of work in order to compute every iteration of gradient descent because the evaluations of the loss function or the gradients of the loss function are expensive. So counterintuitively, it seems we have a method here or we'll get a method here with which we can make progress by doing less work. And of course, that is all only possible because we have done essentially too much work with the previous method gradient descent. So first of all, we notice that in machine learning, often our cost functions and their gradients have the following form. So this is a sum over all of the data points of the capital N data points that we train with. And we have a contribution to the loss function called little ci of a feature xi and parameter set theta. So for example, that could be the mean square error between the ith prediction of the neural network for data point xi and the corresponding label in supervised learning. And if our loss function has this form, then that means the gradient of our loss function also has the form that we have this long sum over individual data points. And first of all, computing such a gradient in every iteration of the optimization algorithm is expensive because we might have to e evaluate a million terms or something like this. So the first idea of stochastic gradient descent is to say, all right, this is basically an expectation value. So both the loss function and the gradient can be seen as an expectation value because it is the form of an arithmetic mean. It's 1 over n times the sum over n of some quantity that we average over. So in the case of the gradient, it's the expectation value of contributions to the gradient from each single data point sampled over the distribution from which these data are coming from. So here we have rewritten this uh, form of the gradient explicitly as an approximation to the expectation value of these gradients over data samples x. Now the idea for stochastic gradient descent is to say well, if we are using expectation values of the gradient anyway to define every single iteration and parameter update, then we can as well change how this expectation is computed. So for example, we can compute the expectation value over a smaller set of samples. So formally, we can argue the gradient of the full training set can be rewritten as capital M sums over gradients of batches with each batch having a batch size of little n. And the next step of the idea is simply to say, all right, we can redefine what an iteration is. Instead of doing one iteration for the full training data set, we can do an iteration for every batch. So we simply compute the gradient expectation value from a single batch of data and then uh, we update parameters and then we take the next batch of data. So let's define stochastic gradient descent algorithmically. So first of all we ignore the constant capital M. We simply can incorporate this into the learning rate. It doesn't change the, the value of the, of the uh, arc min. And uh, we change the gradient descent algorithm to stochastic gradient descent as follows. So we initialize again with an initial set of parameters, theta zero. Then we go through epochs. So that is something like an outer loop or an outer iteration that we call epoch. And we do capital E of them or until some convergence criterion is met. And then for each epoch, we do a number of inner loops or inner iterations where we have mini batches and we have capital M mini batches and in each mini batch we compute the gradient for 
this mini batch, so for this subset of training data, and we then update the parameters along the direction or against the direction of this gradient estimate. So this is very similar to straightforward gradient descent. We are essentially doing the same amount of work as in a gradient descent iteration within one epoch of stochastic, stochastic gradient descent. So every data point gets used once in every epoch. But what's different is that we make parameter updates within each epoch. So within the amount of data that is seen by a single iteration in straightforward gradient descent. So in stochastic gradient descent, the gradient over the full amount of data is replaced by an approximation to that gradient using a mini batch. Using stochastic gradient descent has two advantages. So first of all, because we estimate the gradient from a mini batch in every inner iteration, we have stochasticity or noise on our gradient estimate. And this can be a good thing because it allows us to escape local minima or saddle points. Secondly, because each step is a lot cheaper, the inner iterations cost a lot less than the iterations of the straightforward gradient descent algorithm. This would not matter if we would need the same number of epochs in stochastic gradient descent as we needed number of iterations in gradient descent. Then we would still pay the same computational price or the same computational cost. But it turns out that the total number of uh, iterations or the total number of epochs in stochastic gradient descent tends to be a lot less than the number of iterations in gradient descent, at least with suitably chosen parameters. So it turns out that we can actually save quite a bit of total computational time with this method. In practice, we rarely use the simple form of stochastic gradient descent sketched in the previous slide because it is very noisy and can converge very slowly. So an important contribution that is often used in, in more modern or more commonly used optimization methods based on stochastic gradient descent is momentum. And the momentum term is essentially some form of memory of the direction in which we are moving. Remember the Newton's method, where we had the possibility to change the step size in different dimensions of our high dimensional space according to how the curvature is, yeah, using the second derivatives or the Hessian matrix of all the second derivatives we could inspect the local curvature and then compute what is within a second order approximation the optimal step size along each direction. But as we said, this is too expensive in high dimensional space because we cannot compute, store or even invert this huge Hessian matrix for a million parameters. But something what we can do is to keep track of the step sizes we made in different directions, so essentially the history of gradients, and then use some consensus uh, step resulting from this history. And this is what momentum does. So first of all, we define a momentum parameter gamma between zero and one. This is some sort of memory depth, so it, it tells us how far in the past do we remember uh, previous updates that we made and now we define the update equation as follows so we say the parameters theta are being updated by adding minus v to our current parameter set theta t and this minus v is basically the parameter update and now instead of using the direct estimate of the current gradient as v we define it as a mix of the last step v and the gradient. So for gamma equals zero, this is identical to straightforward gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent, uh, depending on how the gradient is computed. It's either gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent. 
but if gamma is not zero then we have memory of the previous steps we made and we incorporate that into the direction v which is used to update the current parameters. Equivalently we can rewrite these two equations into one equation of the parameter changes. So the delta theta t is basically the changes we made in time step t to the current parameters and we can write uh, that then into we can write the entire update into one equation if we use this notation. So, so v is the parameter update but it's also the running average of the recent gradients and gamma or 1 minus gamma inverse actually is the characteristic time scale of this averaging memory. So using momentum is a similar, um, follows a similar goal as in Newton optimization. We want to understand which are the directions in which we want to make large steps and which are the directions in which we want to make small steps in order to converge as fast as possible. It helps stochastic gradients then to gain speed in the directions where there are persistent gradients. So uh, we have we are consistently going in one direction and we're not oscillating, then we want to speed up and make larger steps there. Whereas if we oscillate a lot in other directions, we average these oscillations out and we make our steps smaller in those directions. So this is especially useful when the loss function that we're optimizing has flat and steep directions. So for example, for very unisotropic minima, where straightforward gradient descent and also stochastic gradient descent are very, very slow because they make many little steps in order to get close to the minimum, then uh, momentum really helps us because it helps us move faster in the shallow direction. All right, this slide here is for the physicists. So for, from a physical point of view, there's an interesting analogy. Let's say we have a particle and the position of the particle is what we denote with theta. So now we want to write down the dynamics of this particle under some force. In physics, the force can often be written as the negative gradient of a potential. So where do we have negative gradients here? Well, we have that in the loss function. The negative gradient of the loss function. That's the direction in which we're moving when we optimize. So it makes sense to call the loss function C a potential from a physics point of view. Now, if we want to compute the dynamics of the particle that feels this force from the potential, we just need Newton's law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. So here you see the force from the potential on the right hand side and mass times acceleration, so mass times the second time derivative of the position on the left hand side. But in order to equate the dynamics to stochastic gradient descent, we need or stochastic gradient descent with momentum, we need another term, which is the drag force or the friction on the right. So minus mu times the first derivative of the position theta. The first derivative of the position theta with respect to time, that is the velocity. So this is a force which has the form of some constant times the velocity, that is a friction. So what we're modeling here is basically the dynamics of a particle that moves in some viscous media, viscous fluid, or something that moves on a, on a surface that it feels friction with. Now we we time discretize this differential equation by introducing finite differences for uh, the derivatives of the particle position theta over time and the second derivative of the, pos the particle position over time. And we define these quantities gamma and eta here. Uh, so basically we just relate our stochastic gradient descent parameters gamma and eta uh, 
to our physics equation parameters, which are the mass m and the friction constant mu. And if we insert these definitions and find our differences into equation 1 here, then the equation that updates the particle position theta in every time step is identical to the stochastic gradient descent with momentum update. So these are really two sides of the same coin. We can see stochastic gradient descent with momentum as an optimization problem for the loss surface, or we can say this is like a particle that moves under a force field which is given by the gradient of the loss function, and the loss function is basically like a potential. In the limit of a small learning rate, we can also equate the momentum memory time scale to these physical quantities, mass and uh, friction and time step. And now if we additionally consider the fact that the gradient, so the, the gradient of the loss function with respect to the parameters theta, is estimated using mini-batches if we use stochastic gradient descent. So then this is not a deterministic Gradient. So basically, whenever we, we re-estimate the gradient, we have some, some noise, some uncertainty on it. And in that case, in order to model this correctly, we have to add another term to equation 1, which is a noise term. It's basically a random force that, that goes into a random direction. It's just a result of subsampling this gradient. And if we then do this and do the same analysis, then it turns out that our parameter update equations are just, uh, just corresponding to numerically solving a Langevin equation or Langevin dynamics. And that is a very common form of dynamics used in physics systems where we have both uh, stochastic and deterministic forces in the system. So with this, we are, we are done with the introduction of stochastic gradient descent, a very, very important algorithm to optimize parameters in neural networks, but also in other learning models. And the main use of stochastic gradient descent is to make calculations where we have loss functions or gradient functions with many, many terms coming from individual data points faster, and also to add noise in, in the optimization process in order to overcome getting stuck in local minima or in saddle points. And in the end, we related stochastic gradient descent to Langevin dynamics. And this is more than a pure analogy or a fun fact. So this is actually something that is a very deep relation from a statistical mechanics point of view. So now we can look at optimizing multidimensional functions, not only uh, from an optimization perspective, but we can see this as some form of dynamics, as some form of sampling. And that means there are deep relationships to statistical mechanics and to computing expectation values. But exploring these relations in more detail that is actually a topic of current research and, and goes quite beyond the topic of this lecture. So let us conclude for now. And then in the next part, we will look at um, additional versions of stochastic gradient descent where we use uh, uh, the second moment of the gradient and thereby accumulate more useful information of what are the, the directions we want to update the parameters in.